blurbs and greetings and Quantex 486 things. Yeah, I got this machine out still. I've been modifying it, taking things apart, swapping things out. Done uh, you know, a fair number of little things to it. But the main thing that I want to talk about today is L2 Cache with this little module right here, which is specifically made for this motherboard, which is known as the M919, I now know. Here's the thing though, okay? <laughs> so if you saw my video where I did a little overview of this when I got it and you know just brought it home, opened it up and was looking inside, I saw these two cache chips on the motherboard. I'm like, oh cool, it's got 256K cache on board, great. So I ran some benchmarks later and realized that uh, they weren't seeing L2 cache. I'm like, well, that's odd. And I thought maybe something was configured weird in the BIOS. Went in the BIOS, made sure it was enabled. Yeah, <laughs> it just, it wasn't showing up. Even though on boot up, it says right back cache enabled and it says it's enabled in the BIOS. It's on the motherboard. Like everything says that there's cache here, but there's not. Uh, okay, so take another look at the traces from those cache chips. Do you see anything weird? Yeah, they don't go anywhere. They don't connect to anything on the top or the bottom of the board. They just, they're just there looking like cache, but they're not actually cache. In fact, the chips themselves, from what I gather, they're just dummy chips. They're just little plastic things that have been soldered to the board. They don't even have anything in there. Uh, I've read that some of these boards that have the fake cache like this do have real cache, but it's not soldered to anything, which is even more dumb. Like if they're trying to, I don't know. So this is some weird scammy kind of thing. And this is a PC chips motherboard. The uh, M919 is what it's known as. Mine is the version 3.3B slash F. And they are all victim of this fake cache or dummy cache or whatever you want to call it. I call it garbage. <laughs> I still really like the motherboard, but I couldn't believe this when I figured this out. There were folks in the comments saying like, oh, you should look into this. Looks like you have one of those fake cash boards. And sure enough, here was, here's one of them. Uh, I had heard of this, but I didn't know actually how far or you know how deep it went in terms of the, uh, the scumminess of it. So PC chips and a bunch of other, the, uh, just motherboard manufacturers back in the day cheaped out, put this fake cache on there, and then made it look like you actually have cache when you <laughs> are just starting it up and looking in the BIOS and stuff. There's messages saying you have it, but you don't. So you're just stuck without level two cache. You still get L1 through the CPU, but level two, it's fake. It, it doesn't do anything. So that's fun. But you know, I also noticed that it has what looked like a coast module there, which is just a little add-on thing for adding more L2 cache because it doesn't have little socketed chips that you can just place in individual cache chips. A lot of these motherboards have these coast modules and I've got a lot of those modules. So, you know, I was thinking of sticking one or two in there, but again, folks in the comments of that last video were saying, no, don't do that because this uses a proprietary sort of version of it, different pinout and everything. And just the regular cache coast modules can ruin it. And then things can go crazy with voltages and that's not good. So don't do that. So PC chips and these other motherboard manufacturers that use this fake cache thing would sell you actual cache to plug into their module there, which is not compatible with just any old other company's module. It's so stupid. It's so stupid and I'm amazed by it. And I kind of love it because it's horrendously dumb. Like I would have been pissed if, if this was uh, something I'd gotten in the 90s, but kind of now it's like kind of fun. Um, but you know, it's still stuck without L2 cache. And because it's like a proprietary module, of course, nobody has one. And it's like, you know, the few that are out there are very, very rare. Nobody's selling them because, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we come to this little thing, which is a reproduction that has been put together by the community. And, yeah, you get uh, the L2 cache for the M919. And this adds... 256k of actual level two cash <laughs> to the motherboard and it just plugs in right there. <laughs> it's just so silly though. Like, it looks like you have cash when you turn this thing on. Let me, let me just go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, I've also added more RAM. I'll talk about that, but well, completely different RAM actually. So yeah. Right back cache on, 
And if you go into the BIOS, you'll see that external cache is enabled. It's just not, like it's not there. You can do some tests, um, like here's one of them right here. And you'll see that in the bottom right there, you have L1 cache, which is on the CPU. Level two though, nothing, nothing shows up. And I ran like cache check, same thing. It's just like, oh, your system only has one cache. It just has level one, no level two. There, it's just fake. It's amazingly fake. Yeah, perhaps this is not news to a number of you. Apparently this is very, very well known with this particular board. I had just never come across it myself in person. I never really looked into it. I just kind of heard about it, you know. <laughs> Folks talking about it over the years. Oh yeah, these fake cache motherboards. I didn't know what to look for. Now I do. I know that. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is uh, install some actual Level two cache, which just goes in here like that. And there we go. <laughs> so cache is still enabled uh, in the BIOS, so we shouldn't have to change anything. In fact, I know we don't have to do because I've already tested this, but yeah. What a silly situation. Oh, and this time, yeah, we got 256K cache memory. So, <laughs> it's there. And again, if you don't use, I'm booting from a boot disk here because you know, memory things and stuff. But anyway, yeah, if you don't use the module that it wants, then not only can apparently it, it can damage your board, but it just won't work. <laughs> from what I've read. I didn't even try it because I got so many warnings of people saying don't use random cache coast modules because you're going to get problems. So let me run speed sys here once again, which is uh, what I had earlier to determine that it didn't have L2 at all. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, we'll let it do its thing here. Oh, and another, this is another thing. So not only was I needing to swap out or just add that module right there, the specific proprietary one, which is the reproduction. Thank goodness those exist. So not only that, but I had to make sure that I had FPM RAM in here and not Edo RAM, which is uh, what I wanted to put in here. I was going to upgrade the eight megabyte 72 pin SIM modules. Uh, there, were, there were two four meg modules that had eight megabytes. So I was going to upgrade it to 16 and then upgrade it to Edo or Edo RAM. Well, it turns out that the system already had Edo RAM installed and I didn't know. I just, I hadn't looked at what the actual sticks were yet that were in here when I got it. It turns out it already had uh, Edo RAM. It just wasn't configured to use it. So whatever, it had Edo RAM in there already. And I didn't know that. So I tried to uh, install this cache module when I first got it without swapping out the RAM yet. And it wouldn't start up. I'm like, oh no, what's going on? Oh, is there something wrong with the module? Is there something wrong with the board? Did I break something? Did voltages? Nope, turns out that it will not boot in some cases, I guess, with certain types of Edo RAM or maybe Edo RAM at all. By the way, there it is. So check it out. We have cache now, 256K and around 58 megs a second. Yeah, so we have both types of cache. <sighs> anyway, but yeah, the Edo RAM situation, didn't realize I had that in there already and I had to swap it out for <laughs> FPM RAM which I just had some lying around from another build and stuck 16 megs of that in there. I was gonna go with 16 megs of Edo, but FPM is what I've gotta use because it just would not boot for me whatsoever with Edo and this cache. Apparently this motherboard is just really specific and particular about what kind of RAM it needs anyway. <laughs> kind of a toss up, certain brands and certain speeds just doesn't like. It likes this though, so I'm working with it. This is also the 1994 BIOS, October 10th. Apparently there's a later version of the Amy BIOS for this. I would like to find that. Apparently that's a little more lenient with things you can add to it, but whatever. Right now it's working. I've got L2 cache. Great. Does it make it any faster? Mm, nominally. Uh, so like if I were to run good old top bench I was getting around 177 before the cache, and now I'm getting around 184. So, you know, 
Eh. Get a 3D bench here. Let's try that. I think it was 47.8 before inputting the cache into there. And now it's going to be a little bit faster, maybe. 49. <laughs> Basically making such a small difference that I don't know if anybody would really notice. But it's nice to have, I suppose. And uh, yeah, just to make sure external cache is enabled. Like I said earlier though, <laughs> even without the cache module installed, you could have this enabled and it would say it was enabled, but it wasn't because there's nothing on the board. And yeah, this is what I've got for the other things in the chipset. Yeah, that's about really what we're gonna get in terms of a performance increase. Not very much. It would have been nice to have a little bit more than that. <laughs> Whatever. Either way though, I just wanted to say that those cache module reproductions exist and the fact that there are these fake cache motherboards around. Uh, oh yeah, real briefly, I guess I should just maybe mention real quick some of the other things I did to this. So obviously I've taken out the CD-ROM or the CD burner. I was planning to do that anyway, but uh, check this out. It was a bit of a catastrophic failure when I tried to use it the other day and something caught on something inside and then it just wouldn't open and it started making a grinding sound and then a snap. Turns out one of the gears busted, I took it apart and like things were just ruined. <laughs> so that wasn't fun. Um, the whole loading mechanism was just, uh, yeah, no. I was gonna replace it anyway, so I'm, I'm still gonna replace it. I haven't done that yet. I put my five and a quarter inch 1.2 meg drive in here. Um, that's cool, it works great. Don't have a disc in there right now, but uh, yeah. So that's awesome. I, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, the LEDs. Uh, turbo now works. So yeah, it's, it's a functioning turbo. Uh, just connected those to the headers there and it lights up. So that's the thing, because it boots up in the faster mode. Pressing turbo makes it go much slower. The hard disk LED is now a thing that's connected. You can see it flashing red there when I did check disk. And the way I did that is because um, it, it was connected to the motherboard header, but because I'm using this compact flash adapter, I just uh, desoldered the LED that was facing the back of the case and then soldered on a new two pin, you know, just a little basic header there and put that in the place of the LED because I don't really need an LED in the back. I want the LED in the front. And then, yeah, just connected that to the front panel LED header there. And yay, I've got a working hard disk LED now. Uh, yeah, I've already gone over the RAM. I replaced that. Haven't done anything else to the CPU yet. Haven't tried others. I've I want to give the Pentium Overdrive, the 83 megahertz one, a shot. Because that seems like it would be fun since we have a better board here. Or, you know, a PCI board. So, uh, yeah. I guess that's about it. Oh, no, one other thing. The power supply. I've noticed that the fan isn't working at all. <laughs> it's, it's just, it doesn't do anything. You know, it's not like it's running super hot or whatever. Uh, we're not pushing this thing very hard, but I would like to get the fan working. So I'll either replace that or just swap it out with a better power supply. Who knows? I don't know. It's, it's a, a minor thing, but it's there. <laughs> would be nice to have a fan because that's about the hottest part of this thing. It, you know, the CPU, it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. CD-ROM is the next upgrade. And oh yeah, the friggin' stupid sound card. Need to get that swapped out with something that doesn't suck. <laughs> Viper 16. Uh, I mean, you know, it's an okay card. It just there are way better options. Might go with an ESS audio drive just to mix things up. Oh, and the, uh, the battery. Another thing. So I noticed that if I left it unplugged for a bit, that the BIOS would lose everything. It, the CMOS would just go nuts. So I'm like, okay, what's going on with the battery? Um, it was like that when I first got it, but I figured, ah, maybe just the previous person didn't set it or something. Well, no, it, it turns the battery. It turns out the battery wasn't holding a charge at all, so I replaced it with another coin cell CR2032 standard thing over there. Uh, just a little <laughs> boink right in there, um, but it's not doing anything either. I don't know what's going on. So a little coin cell 
is not doing anything. Like it's not remembering stuff. I power it off and it stays on for like, or you know, remember settings for about a minute. But if it's unplugged for any length of time longer than about a minute or two, it just forgets everything that's in the settings. So that's annoying. It does have a four pin external battery header. So I might grab one of my Tataran batteries, you know, like 3.6 volt deals. Just jump that onto there. We'll see if that does any better. Uh, I have messed with the connections on the coin cell battery holder, you know, tighten them down and clean them up and stuff. It still doesn't work. So I haven't done any testing beyond that to see if maybe there's a trace messed up or who knows what. Either way, it's not saving the settings. And honestly, you could probably do with a recap, but <laughs> we'll get to that when the time comes. So that's pretty much it for the Quantex. It's coming together. <laughs> there's more to do on here than I thought. So it goes. It's always an adventure buying a new old computer. Even when it's in fantastic shape and looks to be like everything is in good working order, sometimes it just ain't. So I hope this video wasn't boring as balls because, man, we haven't really done anything. I'm just talking. It's a blurb video. I blurb. That's what I do. Cool. Quantex 486. To be continued eventually. <laughs>